we're now coming to the um, the last session of the conference, which is uh, the second keynote speech. And uh, we have already um, met our keynote speaker from his three roles, um, uh, previous uh, two roles as uh, one of the panelists in that wonderful round table. And also as the moderator of the uh, the previous session, you know, which was equally equally interesting, and so I'm not going to repeat what has already been said uh, in his own self introduction, and also um, Leo's Leo Leo's introduction of him. But I just wanted to just say a little bit about something that has not been uh, said about him, um, Dr. Claudia Fantinioli uh, was trained as a linguist. And he ventured into a natural language processing and AI quite early in his career. Aside from being a lecturer um, at the Univers University of Mainz and also a researcher at the Uni University of Mainz in Germany and as head of innovation at Kudo, he is also a consultant on automatic speech recognition and speech translation for some institutions of the EU. And so this is the implementer part of him. Uh, of course, we already know him as a creator and also the inventor. As a researcher, he describes himself as someone who is passionate about the interaction of mind, brain, including computational um, and language. And he has conducted research in computer-assisted human interpreting, automatic speech translation, that is real-time machine interpreting, uh, in his own words, with a human user at the center. And today from his speech, we're going to learn more about his vision of the future, where interpreting and technology interact, and how interpreting may be transformed by technology. His topic is from assistive tools to full automation, what digital technologies mean for interpretation. Dr. Claudia Fantioli, welcome. Thank you very much for your kind words. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, it's also difficult to close uh, this conference because so many good presentations have been uh, presented uh, today, highlighting so many topics around technology. So I thought uh, maybe the right way for me to close this is to give what is my personal uh, view with all its limitations about what's next uh, for interpretation, so for multilingual communication and for interpreters as actors uh, of this uh, multilingual communication. Um, as you said, I combine uh, a linguist um, interpreting in particular background with uh, automation. So my view is, if you want, uh, uh, the result of the combination of uh, uh, these two worlds, uh, the human world and the AI world. Let me start from the end, um, telling you what are, in my opinion, my three uh, takeaways of my presentation. AI? is making impressive and rapid improvements in the processing of lateral language processing. Um, uh, yes, and we need to be aware of this. When I mean impressive, I really mean that even a person like me that is inside this space is sometimes uh, surprised uh, how um, fast and how powerful uh, these tools are becoming. Mm. This is one idea. We must take this with us after uh, this conference. The second is that, of course, multilingual communication 
as a phenomenon, if you want, and interpreting. So the act uh, of interpreters uh, performing multilingual communication will be influenced by AI. AI is a sub-segment of technological transformation. The third is that there are many reasons, in my opinion, why we should be optimistic about the opportunities that this change uh, will present. Of course, there are risks and we should be aware of them, but I'd like to um, change the perspective or the feeling that most of people, most of people have about most interpreters or translators, most people involved in language communication, multilingual communication has about this advance of AI, which is normally a negative one. In my opinion, said it a little bit uh, before in our discussion, AI is a big opportunity, uh, both for multilingual communication, which is not the same as interpreter. Right? Multilingual communication is an opportunity for this. And is also an opportunity for the actors of multilingual communication that we have today, the interpreters in our case. So these are the three take takeaways. And I will try a little bit to argument them in the next 40 minutes. First of all, I will again move uh, in this presentation at a very high level, very general level, which sometimes also mean a very superficial level. Sorry for this. And many things I will say are known uh, to you, but still they need to be said again. Okay. The first thing is about complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to, to remind ourselves that the changes that we are assist assisting now, we are, we are seeing now, are embedded in a context of complexity, of a system that is complex. Mm -hmm. A system which is complex is complex because there are many components in it that interact uh, with each other. Mm -hmm. And the components itself in a complex system may change over time, and the power inside the system may change over time. A complex system is difficult uh, to understand for us humans, mm? uh, and it's even more difficult to govern, mm? to, to, to try to make a sense out of it and direct it in a way that is positive for all the stakeholders, whoever they are. In a complex system, the forces between the elements are not symmetrical. There are more weak ones. And there are complex systems. Uh, there is a global, global climate, the human brain, uh, the stock market. And of course, one other is interpreted. Um, so this is nothing new, but we should remind ourselves that interpreting is a complex system. And this is a complex system, at least from two perspectives. Um, the first one is that interpretation, as a, I don't need to describe what interpretation is, is part of a complex system. Mm -hmm. which if you want, you can go from the physical world to society, then it's communication, to multilingual communication, then you have the written, the oral communication. And inside all of these uh, systems that are, of course, not as simple as uh, depicted in my uh, presentation, we find interpretation. If we remind ourselves about what we said before, so all the other elements and, and systems within the system will affect immensely uh, the, the, the system that we are interested in, which is interpretation. This is one uh, perspective of complexity and interpretation as a complex system. The second one is um, inside interpretation itself. So interpretation is a complex system in itself. It means it's, done, it's made out of many elements interacting with each other, changing power and so on. The, the, the list I've 
put down just a random list of some elements. Uh, it's much more complex than this. Okay, so complex system inside other complex systems. This makes interpretation so very difficult to understand not the process of interpretation, which is, of course, difficult to understand, but interpretation of the phenomenon, and very difficult to go there. What's happening now is that we have, we are assisting to a very fast change of the elements in it, of the equilibrium, if you want, of these elements, and a, a increasing degree of complexity outside, the system of interpretation and inside the system of interpretation. And in this uh, schema, in, in this graphic, I just try very, 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 not scientifically, uh, to depict this complex net of uh, relationships and, uh, and complexity. And you see uh, uh, already that I picked up three elements which are bigger, which are becoming bigger. and and which are the powerful elements in this ecosystem, if you want, of interpretation, which is technology on one side and AI. I separate them uh, just because for the sake of it, because I want to underline that AI is more powerful than technology, the other, all other technologies which are not AI and values uh, I put there. So what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say that the, the system of interpretation is becoming more complex. And the two keys, key points, in my opinion, that are driving this uh, level of complexity to a new uh, dimension are on the one side, technology and AI. Um, on the other side, uh, new phenomena, I call them very blandly, very generally a new phenomena and values. So technology is becoming more pervasive. It's becoming more sophisticated. Uh, we talk about this. It's becoming more accessible, meaning uh, in the real meaning of accessible, it's much easier to access AI technology than it was two years ago. And it's becoming more powerful. This is an element um, of gravitational force, which is impacting uh, interpreting or it will impact interpreting in the near future. The second one is more known uh, among us. Um, we have uh, new phenomena, meaning, for example, uh, the, the, the increase of number of uh, uh, spoken language events, whatever we uh, may understand uh, uh, under events, that we have uh, the internet, uh, a lot of production of spoken language content and so on. We have more interactions, we have heard it before. But we have also new values. It's always been there, but they are becoming more prominent, uh, like in society, like the need of accessibility, which we said it before in, in the, in the uh, panel. It's not only accessibility for some specific um, areas, but it's accessibility for everybody in different levels and in different areas, inclusivity. This call for democratizing uh, access, which is a very strong word. I agree with other people that are a bit cautious about this, but still this need uh, to, to make it more, to make accessible, accessibility more accessible, so to say. These are two power, powerful uh, elements changing, uh, in my opinion, in the interpretation. Um, so, I'm uh, personally uh, more involved in the artificial intelligence impact, the impact of artificial intelligence. The, the two are, by the way, very connected. I will make the point later. But I will concentrate myself on artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, stating the obvious, uh, the trajectory of technological development is clear. It's always been like this. We have humans doing something, whatever it is, without technology. We have humans 
being supported by technology. We have technology supporting humans in doing the same stuff. And we have technology doing the same stuff without humans. In the middle, we have what we call augmentation, which is a very popular term in these years. Down, we have the full automation. And this is something which has nothing to do with language, but to do with every uh, walk of life. Uh, here I have some examples. Here's a plane. Um, before I was uh, uh, working on the fields, um, doing activities like washings and so on, medicine. So uh, uh, doctors are being supported uh, in this case by radiologists, by AI, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, in every walk of life, I say it, we have coffee machines at our home that do what a person would normally do. And we are quite happy with it, even if I assure you, drinking a coffee in a good bar with a bar, bar man or woman is always better. But still, we are very happy with it. So this is a trajectory which is given uh, by us. It's not a nature of law, but it's some way given. And inside this, there is also spoken language translation, which I call it like this and not interpretation, because interpretation is a part, uh, in my opinion, of it. I'm not going into definition of words. And we have on the one side the augmentation, and there are many examples of it nowadays. We have subtitling and dubbing with a human in the loop uh, approach. So you do AI subtitling, then some people do revision and so on. You have re-speakers, uh, which are supported uh, by, of course, a speech recognition. You have Kai Tool. Uh, we have been spe sp speaking a lot uh, about this today. We have distance interpreting and so on. Mm -hmm. On the one side. On the other side, you have the full automation, which is more or less the same things done exclusively by machines. So you have automatic dubbing, which is a very strong area of research, uh, voiceover. You have live subtitling for accessibility, one-to-one um, -one translation, or even into easy languages and so on for uh, accessibility and so on. And you have machine interpretation, right? the bad word uh, that most people don't like to pronounce. What we see is that there is a pattern of moving this position where we are now, which is very much towards augmentation, uh, to the right, uh, to the full automation. This brings us to the awareness that we must be aware of this, that we are entering at a very speed, fast speed, a time of coexistence of the two, hmm? a time where augmentation and full automation will live side by side also in language domains, depending on use cases, depending on the technology, depending on many things that we will uh, um, discuss in a few moments. But the trajectory is this, is given. Doesn't mean that it's going to go the full length towards the right. This versus should be something message so human versus machine that we should overcome because it's not you, uh, um, useful for our discussions. But we have a shift, a fast shift that will bring us, lead us to a coexistence of the chat. Now, um, it's a little bit small, but on top left, you see these four um, stages that I pointed out before, humans without technology, uh, stages in between, and technology without humans. Uh, this trajectory is just for a, making it clear which is the direction. It doesn't mean that one step comes after the other, because reality will be, as I introduced it, I said it a couple of seconds before, uh, different. In language technologies, what we have right now, and we will see it in the next months, years, is that we have absolutely um, 
um, lost the idea of humans without technology. This is not happening, but not only because of AI, but it's not been happening for, for years. Hmm? Also in language, in the language domain. What we are seeing is that not this step after the other, is that we go from humans without technology to a three phases in parallel of human supported by technology. Here are some pictures uh, from uh, an interpreter uh, interpreting from home through technology. So it's human doing the, uh, the, the, the hard work and technology supporting this for remote interpretation. You see um, um, assistive technology in the second screenshot uh, for human doing the interpretation, but technology supported it. Okay. In parallel, we have technology supported by humans. Um, this is a very interesting uh, experiment and paper uh, di done by uh, Koripsky and others uh, in England, where the, you combine, I call it technology supported by humans, where you combine a risk speaker in trilingual risk speaker, so from English into English, and then you attach in the pipeline machine translation to translate what the human risk speaker formulated uh, into many languages. Mm, the idea you have only one person doing the hard job of translating, and then you have machine translation uh, exponentially, so to say, um, um, translating um, the, the, the original into potentially uh, unlimited number of languages. Mm. And here, if you want, is the technology, which is uh, machine translation, which is supported by uh, the re-speaker uh, for um, creating the right premises for a good translation. Mm. Already happening right now, at least in first experiments and so on. Third one, of course, is Technology without humans. This is a screenshot from the European Parliament uh, where they are introducing um, speech to text uh, translation as a means for increasing accessibility for deaf for hard of hear hearing people in real life, in real time uh, during plenary uh, meetings. The, the, the third example is a very nice example, uh, because if you go to the European Parliament, uh, you will see this application running um, at the moment, still in experimental phase, and you will see the interpreters uh, doing the job in real time. So the one doesn't exclude the others. They are uh, uh, happening in parallel for different tasks, for different uh, uh, things that they want to achieve. So this is the new reality that we are starting to see now. We have been starting to see in the cup last, last, next last couple of years, and that we will see to come to us in the next uh, months, I would say, with more and more uh, uh, force. The question that you may ask is, is this really possible? Uh, can we really achieve this? Uh, and the answer is absolutely yes. It's yes uh, if we know what AI is, if we know how it is evolving, and if we know what the limitations of AI, because of course, AI is a word that I really don't like. It's uh, used too much for wrong things, but it's what gives us an idea what we're talking about. Mm. And if we consider what AI is, if we consider that the interpretation is part of a complex system and is a complex system, then we will see that this reality that I depicted you would become our new normality. So let's start from AI. Just a few, a few, few words uh, to, to uh, take away misconceptions about AI, but many people still have less and less, but misconception about AI in language. AI is not what I'm showing you now, um, which is very fantastic movies. I uh, advise you uh, to, to watch 
them, especially ex machina on the right and her uh, very actual, very, very uh, current topics now. But this is not AI, because we have to make a distinction between artificial general intelligence, which is what the uh, movies are talking about, and narrow intelligence, which is what we are working, working on for reality which is nothing more than the ability to solve some tasks in a somewhat, I put this uh, in italic, in a somewhat autonomous way, tasks that would normally require some form of what we generally call intelligence. It's a very general uh, uh, definition, but it narrows down the scope of what AI is. On the one time, on the, on the one side, we, we, we have a, wrong definition of AI in our imagination. And we think, okay, this is not going to happen. Uh, this strong AI, so nothing will happen with AI and languages. And on the other side, I have to say that we overestimate, overestimate humans when they use uh, uh, language. We, because language is such a human um, uh, feature ability, we think that everything that has to do with language has to do something with something magical aspect of our brain, of our in, in embedding our body, brain, in culture, and so on. But the more we know about AI, the more we see that many of the aspects of our human language are more or less spectacular or sophisticated than we think, which doesn't mean they are not uh, spectacular, but the, the, the amount of what is really unique in a human, and there is something which is really unique, tend to be smaller than what we, th we think. And we see this just because of the advances of uh, um, um, what we can do in, with AI. And because AI is not intelligent, we have this even inside artificial intelligence, this very broad definition that we say, say AI is not intelligent, but it's so smart that can do something that resemble intelligence, and it does it in a very good way in many areas. And when AI does the same as a human, we tend, or I personally tend to think that what was done by the human in that specific area to, did not require so much intelligence as we would have assumed before. So if you want, AI is a measurement of the really intelligence or what is intelligence in, in humans. So this is very, very broad, very general, but just to, 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 to say that um, we are at a stage where AI is mature. Um, here I jump very nice ideas from Floridi, philosopher, Suskin, uh, economist, the fact that, as I said before, we don't need for many problems intelligence to solve that problem. And it's a very, very powerful message. And the second one is very powerful too, is that we don't need to imitate humans to perform, Suskin say, better, or I'd say um, similar to humans. We have to remind this to ourselves. And it's very difficult to remind to ourselves because it in some way put a little bit smaller uh, the importance uh, of, of us. In AI and spoken language translation, we see so big progress, speech recognition with human-like some areas, uh, uh, quality, machine translation, speech synthesis, generative models are very, very, very last few uh, months, um, uh, models that can imitate human in creating, for example, texts and many other technology. So we see on the one side, big progress. And while we see this big progress, we get also aware of the limitations of this, uh, of this AI. Mm -hmm. and in the language, uh, spoken language translation, we see that um, la spoken language is very complex. The, the language mm, uh, is very complex. Um, but we, 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 we see things from, from interpreting studies and so on, which are obvious 
true, obviously true, that interactive communication is very complex, uh, for example. Um, we, we recognize that the processing that we are doing with AI is happening at the surface of language. So it's really a superficial uh, um, processing of, uh, of what's happening with language, let alone culture and all the other aspects with our inner and uh, to, to communication. Mm. And that many liars are absolutely not codified in texts, in, in, think about body language and, and many other contexts. They're not even taken into consideration right now. But still, and I will show you a couple of examples. We see that AI uh, is reaching, I say it again, some level of maturity. And of course, we know that just stating it, it's obvious that language where AI is at the moment has supernatural uh, capacity and the language process is completely different from communication. There are two different uh, areas. Of course, they are uh, related to each other, but they're very difficult, different. And we see this in the interpretation, uh, in, in, a, in a, um, going down into some specific areas that AI can be used for uh, assisted interpreting, of course, hmm? uh, for this augmentation. But we haven't seen this now, but you will see it very soon, that AI can also be used for automating it, interpretation. So uh, interpretation is a form of uh, speech, spoken language translation, which is happening in the real time mm, uh, with real people interacting or not, depends, uh, but in real time with addition, editing, and so on. Machine interpretation is coming. Um, and I want to stress that this is not bad. It's not bad that this is happening. It's not bad that it's happening for communication, multilingual communication, because, well, there is a hope behind machine interpretation. The hope is that it makes multilingual communication in some areas, in some settings, really democratic, difficult, problematic word, but some way, uh, affordable, ubiquitous, because it relies on overcoming the exclusivity that we have with professions. This is, I advise you to, to read Sus Suskin uh, about this uh, exclusivity of professions and so on. But it's good, not only for machine, for, for, for communication, I think, it's also good for interpreters. It's good for interpreters because the more automation we have, the more people will realize how important it is, the human aspect of this. I will go into this in a few seconds. I jump the experimental applications because we have seen so many uh, examples uh, these days, but we're seeing that the quality, and the, 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 my point was that, Notwithstanding the many limitations of AI, and I could have a talk about all the only about the limitations that yeah, they're obvious. We see that uh, the support they can offer support, they can offer, and this is uh, the results from uh, uh, Koribsky that I mentioned before. They can augment, so the the um, the, the offer of uh, of uh, multilingual. Um, translation in real time uh, with machine, they can do this. But we see that, that the quality is somewhere there, if we like it or not. And these are uh, studies that are limited in scope, the beginning, but the trajectory, this is important if you want to look at the future. And then we also see this is um, a very small experiment that we did one year ago, maybe um, maybe more with, with um, Bianca uh, Pandi, where we've seen that also in a full automated uh, manner, we can achieve some, let's say, interesting result in quality. That brings me to the conclusion that uh, um, AI is there. The trajectory is clear. We are mature to support professionals and to extend accessibility where humans cannot be involved on are not needed. 
and this with considering also the, the, the limitations of AI. But we don't know so many things. There are so many things that we don't know that we didn't start to ask uh, questions. Um, if technology moves in that this direction and is already there, and of course it will be even more there in one year, two years, and so on, where should we use it and where not? Who should use it? Should who should use it not? What about the risks? What about the responsibility of all this uh, uh, of this technology in the multilingual domain? Um, it's clear that here is uh, um, the president, uh, the president of Italy, Mattarella, meeting the day before yesterday, I think, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, talking about topics. You see the interpreters there. Would you like to have a machine interpreting this? Would the people that want a the machine, even if the machine is perfect, would the people want a machine doing this? I would say no. Hmm? Um, here is immigra immigration. Would you? Have a machine, even if this would be perfect. Um, and 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 then by the way, in interaction, machines are way uh, far away from from being, I would not say perfect, but usable. But even if, would you like a machine to maybe um, interpret a, a very delicate, emotionally, but not only emotionally, but also from the outcome. Uh, uh, encounter for, for asylum, for example? I would say no. Would you like a machine interpret a podcast in real time? Well, maybe yes, why not? Okay. If uh, a person cannot uh, listen to Lex Friedman here with, uh, with uh, uh, Elon Musk uh, in English, well, they may enjoy it uh, in, a, in another language uh, done by interpretation, by, by, by machine. There is no interpretation happening there. It will never be like this. And would you like to uh, um, have some access in the politics for migrants that do not have access to the language where they uh, moved to the country and are excluded by um, uh, the political life? Of course, you can have interpretation, human interpretation, but is, it, is this happening? Will this happening at scale to allow really um, participation? Probably not. So maybe something um, is of accessibility is good if machine can take over this. Hmm? Would you like a statement by Zelensky uh, on TV interpreted by machine? Probably not, even if, again, it's uh, the best uh, interpretation of all. Would you like a YouTuber, um, if you're uh, passionate about something in Korea in this case, um, a young people would like to have access to this? Probably yes. Hmm? Would you like it in court? We had that have today. I probably no. Hmm? Are we talking about this in a, in a very scientific way? Are we giving, are we, becoming the experts that politicians maybe if we are lucky hmm, that is another point uh, that Sabine mentioned today will engage with when it's time to take decision and um, regulation we talked about regulation we are seeing at the European Union a lot of regulation going on in some aspects of AI these days this will happen also in interpretation, of course. Are we ready to discuss this in an informed way? Not in a negative way, but even in a positive way, but in an informed way? I would say we are not at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, somebody said it today, uh, we need just to look at translation. Uh, to know what's happening in interpretation and what may be needed in interpretation. For example, the topic of risks, risk assessment, and so on, uh, is a topic that is quite um, in vogue uh, at the moment in translation. Uh, um, at my university, Mainz, uh, there are uh, researchers doing a lot of about translation and risk management. All this stuff will become uh, relevant also in interpretation. 
but because the time is becoming slower, uh, smaller, sorry, the time to this uh, uh, developments and use of these developments, we should anticipate this and not wait, see, okay, that's in two years, there will be somebody coming and saying to, uh, yeah, let's, let's use AI, it's uh, cheap, it doesn't need to be uh, um, uh, booked in advance and so on. And then we will start to have the problem. So we should, and we start, we will start to see conferences like this, also interested in the topic. We should do it more before. Uh, last slide is just, would you like to have a business meeting interpreted by AI? Probably yes. So I, I would um, say that, and I go, go towards the end, uh, that there are many positive aspects of this change. And we should focus really in the mind setting on the positive sides without forgetting all the risks and all the negative sides. But focusing on the positive side will allow us to translate, I think, this change in something which is positive also for society and for uh, the profession. Again, um, human, here just, I will just uh, read out a couple of uh, uh, positive and then also the negative uh, aspects. Maybe there would be um, good for, for, for the discussion, for a couple of minutes of discussion. So we will have human and machine in coexist. This will, in my opinion, these are just my opinions, of course, will push for more quality in interpretation, in human interpretation, because if the machine is good enough, let's say good enough, of course, I will, as a user, prefer machine as an interpreter for a good enough, a good enough interpreter uh, for good enough performances. Hmm? This will push, we have seen this in, in, in written translation, the quality requirements, which is fantastic from a professional point of view, up hmm? uh, for, for, for interpretation, will require people to be more expert in what they do. Hmm? It would be a diversification of the market. Mm. Um, take simultaneous interpretation. Simultaneous interpretation is a very elitarian activity, allowed only very few cases, very few uh, events, and so on, in a very few languages, by the way. Mm. The possibility that also machine will come into play, will open up new markets for the machine and will bring the human maybe only to the good, very significant, very um, risky, if you want, very prestigious market. I know wrong democratization, wrong word, democratization of access, but let's say there is a potential, as I said before, to make accessibility, in this case, multilingual accessibility, some way more accessible to everybody, which is a good thing, I think. For the profession, there are new profiles, professional profiles emerging, uh, risk speaker and so on, there are no, but also about the knowledge of this transformation. We need people that need to, 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 to lead this transformation from the side of the language uh, profession. And AI, I'm pretty sure, will create new jobs for interpreters because if multilingual um, services become more accessible through machines, and we know pretty well about the limitations of machines. And by the way, they will not disappear in a couple of years. But let's be clear. Improvement is still there. Uh, space for improvement is still there. But there are challenges that are out of scope in the next year. So there will always be the importance for the human factor. And the more people will use this AI, the more people will understand how important multilingual communication is and how important human supported 
communication. So there is a possibility for increasing uh, jobs. And there is more social recognition to come. We, I'm sorry to say, but we have not been able to, to elevate the social recognition in the last 50 years where uh, multilingualism and so on was fashion and important. We have not been able uh, to, 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 to raise this. I'm pretty sure that maybe AI can make the difference because people will recognize what's different between a machine and the skills that a human interpreter has. And maybe there are many other positive aspects. There are negative aspects, of course. We don't have to, to, to close our eyes about this, about the AI and the negative aspects or consequences. There is the increase of digital divide. There is on the one side more democratization of the hope more democratization of accessibility. But on the other side, there is a digital divide between countries, between groups of people that we become very concerned uh, and we should address this. Hmm? Some segments of the market will disappear. As I said before, the low segments, uh, if a machine man can do good enough job, so take the machine and the good enough interpreters will disappear as the good enough translators disappeared. There will be risk of misuse of, of machine interpretation. Absolutely. Because people don't know. Because people uh, look at the, 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 the money. Mm -hmm. But to counterbalance this, there is a need of knowledge about this and from whom, if not from the interpreting community. Concentration of power, of course, uh, this technology is concentrated in a few hands. Uh, but at the same time, I have to say that there is a very big movement, even from the big tech companies, to make this technology accessible to everybody. Mm, this is uh, also a very interesting development. Lately, um, there is what well, I fear that it's going to happen in some cases if we are not uh, able to use this transformation for the good of also of the profession, a marginalization of profession, of professionals. In some, in some cases, um, there is a risk. This and this needs to be gov governed very well uh, by, by the community. And this is the obsolescence of all models. Whatever we have done in the past, in some cases, will be obsolescent. obsolescent. And there are other, uh, for sure, uh, topics. What we need, I'm going to, 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 to the end. These are very, very basic uh, ideas, but I think we can agree or not agree, but they are, in my opinion, quite logical. We need AI, and we said it to, today, and machine learning, actually literacy. Uh, we need people in our field to know very well. We cannot separate any more humanistic hmm, knowledge and technical knowledge, the two need to converge at some level, of course. We need to discuss much more about this. It's not happening. I'm sorry to say this, but it's not happening that we are discussing properly AI. We are discussing some aspects of it, which are important. I'm so pleased about all the papers uh, in this conference, but we are not discussing other topics. Um, machine interpreting, I would say. We're not evaluating machine interpreting, but I've been saying this for, for long. Um, and we should do it from the perspective of the user-centric perspective. We should try to find a way, and I don't have the answer, to use this transformation to pursue our own interest, also your own interest of interpreters. Uh, how can we use all this, even machine interpreting, to give new uh, power to, 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 to us. We should focus on knowledge and not skills. I keep on saying this very much and very often. Skills are important, but they're just something that we, we need to have. People need to have skills. My students need to have skills, but it's obvious. We need knowledge, more knowledge. We are in a knowledge driven society and also interpreters and uh, the community and so on need this knowledge which also translate to focus on the human factor the more human 
that the more technological driven society a profession becomes the more important is the human factor in, in this and it's not rhetor rhetoric what i'm saying it's really what i believe mm. and this is an that, that's the reason why i see an opportunity here because the the, the 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 profession the activity itself is becoming more technological driven there is a, a, a space for underlying highlighting the value of the human part of it mm. and I think it was Bianca or Chris before saying this, we don't have to make humans to machines. Mm -hmm. There are many people trying to make machines more human, but we are also very good at making our society, making humans to machine. And this is not the right way to do, uh, to, to, to go on about this and many other stuff. And I conclude about education because I am involved in education. I teach uh, and proud to teach uh, human interpretation uh, at the university uh, in, in German. Um, and I have a clear and very, very, in my mind, very clear vision about the change that we have to make happen in education, especially university education, to prepare people that will be the leaders of the, 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 the interpretation, translation, and so on of tomorrow. Now we have this situation here depicted in four topics, a very narrow speciali specialization, separation of interpretation and translation, focus on the application of technology, and focus on learning hard skills. This is last century approach. AI brings new needs, and these new needs are for more uh, going back to the root of education, if you want, more holistic learning. It's professional skills, in my opinion, can even go out of university. It depends. Uh, every country is different. Uh, university are organized by very different. But it's the, the idea um, that I want to uh, convey. And can go really outside in um, continuous uh, professional development uh, schemes when, uh, when it's about, for example, very specific skills, but we need an holistic. We need to revive the role of humanities and bring it together with the technology, with a deep knowledge of technology. The two cannot be separated anymore. And of course, very busy. The soft skills, been talking about this, everybody's talking about this, becomes even more important. This is the core of education, which AI, again, also for education, is pushing to revive, in my opinion. So the conclusion, these were, were my three main takeaways. AI is making impressive and very fast progress. We will see the results of this in shorter, shorter time frames. Multilingual communication and interpretation as a part of multilingual communication will be heavily affected uh, by AI. But this influence is not only negative, there is a lot of potential here, but it's up to us, to you, to make sense of what's happening and translate it in something positive. There is space with every disruption, with every change, there is always space for improvements, for advantages, there are risks, there are things that will go worse than before, but there is, and we must be aware of this, focus of, on this, try to find a counterbalance, but the focus should be on how to translate change which is happening into some, something which is positive for everybody. That's it from my side. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Fantinioli, um, for giving us such a full spectrum, thought-provoking and at times philosophical account of the complexity of the future of uh, interpreting a technology. I, I now I understand why you used to tell me that you can sometimes become very abstract in your talk. 
but somehow you've uh, you managed to make this uh, complexity easier to understand while while instilling some um, optimism um, uh, in the future of uh, interpreting and technology, um, including very concretely uh, job creation. I think is what a lot of people like to hear. Okay, I think that um, now we uh, open the floor for questions. Again, um, for our participants online, you can raise your hand uh, before you ask a question that you will be unmuted. And uh, our audience on site, of course, you can use your hand and the microphone will be passed on to you. Do you have any questions? Uh, I yeah. think there are questions from this. Right, so is that, okay. Anna Catherine, yes, please. I thought maybe that Franz wanted to go first with this question because he had his hand raised and I don't want to okay. take anyone's time. Okay, yeah, it's usually the ladies first, but thank you, anne -Kathrin. Um, If I may, thank you so much, Claudio, for this uh, grand plenary talk, uh, such a rich picture. And I, I really only take this opportunity to congratulate you and thank you for what you have shared with us rather than um, making inspiring comments. But just one or two small, right at the beginning, you, you impressed on Ask the idea of complexity interpreting as a complex system within complex systems. I think this idea is so important. But then I was a bit disappointed to see you get into the oral bubble versus the written, whereas we have had beautiful examples of speech to text and side translation. And it's come up again when you talk about spoken language translation. And I'd just like to take this opportunity for this plea for all of us to consider, to give more consideration to, to uh, interpreting in other language modalities, sign language interpreting. I think it's come up only once during this uh, beautifully organized grand conference. And so maybe this would be an opportunity also to add a few uh, comments on what has been going on in terms of AI and sign language. I think some fascinating developments there as well. So I think one misconception, as you put it at the end, that we might want to get away from is also that uh, interpreting is spoken and interpreting is oral, that uh, that we... I think uh, we, we lost you, Franz. But I, I, it, of I, course. I... And then toward the end, I don't want to go on. For... Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I'll come back, but uh, I'll, I'll stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, now we can hear you. Oh, it may be helpful, Franz, if you can turn. Yes, on. I'm sorry for my bad connection, but I'll I'll leave it at that because oh maybe one comment while while it's still working, some an interesting contradiction when you said uh, people will realize uh, what humans are worth because they will have seen the 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 machines performing. On the other hand you say people don't know, they will go by cost. And uh, we, we, we lost you again, so but this I think- really uh, putting her on- Talking over each other. Franz, I, I think probably yeah. it would be helpful if you probably, if you want to turn off your camera so that you know, some bandwidth can be released. Okay. Uh, do you want to finish your question? No, I think- uh, I'm fine. Uh, Claudio understands. Yes, I understand. Uh, yeah, first of all, thank you for uh, for your nice words. And I must say, I completely agree with everything you have said. Um, written, we, we should overcome all these silos that we have built in the past. Uh, my schema with, with my, my graphic with all, uh, written and um, oral uh, was uh, very, very unfortunate. Um, I hope I made the, the, the a little bit uh, 
okay again when I say that we should overcome, for example, translation and interpretation in education. I, I perfectly agree with you, and I perfectly agree with you about the need uh, not only to see them no more separated, but also to in 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 englobe in this uh, sign language interpretation and other forms of accessibility that we are still uh, too much myself too from. Uh, the, the, the background, the imprint that I have from my university and so on, that I need to make the effort myself to, to look at this in a more complex way. I perfectly agree with you uh, on this. Uh, and by the way, you said it rightly, there are, be, there, is, there are big projects on AI and um, sign language interpretation, of course, from the European Union, which is investing a lot in this, which are very, very uh, interesting and, and um, um, promising for the future. And about the last thing about this, you notice uh, people will notice the difference, and at the same time they will not. They don't know very much what I, they're talking about. I see the contradiction, um, and I don't have an answer to this contradiction uh, that I presented at the moment. I think the only answer I can tell is that we as a community, especially at academia, need to talk more about this also for ourselves, for a better understanding of our, for, for ourselves about what, what, how do we solve uh, contradictions that maybe are not contradiction, we just think they are contradiction, or we, we need to talk to discuss these topics much more than we are doing now to, to make the next step. But thank you for your comments. I agree 100%. Well, um, well, thank you. Since Anne Catherine has already had her, her hand raised, so we're going to just allow one question. Anne Catherine, please. Yeah. I feel honored. Um, so first, my, my favorite slide was actually your last one, which says it's in our hands, because I totally agree. It is also in our hands to make this change and to turn it to something that is positive. But now my question. Um, you mentioned, right, we could use machine translation, you know, if it works, like in a better than nothing um, scenario, for instance, for um, in, in medical context, legal context, asylum, and this kind of settings where usually there is no money, actually, to have any interpreters or translators, or maybe not too much, at least not so much in Switzerland though it's a very rich country. Um, what what do you think can we, okay, I need, sorry, my, my thoughts are going a little bit in all directions at the same time. So it's usually, it's, it's a domain where there's not so much money, not enough for interpreters and translators. At the same time, I feel it's really the, the area where we would need human interpreters, human translators, because it's not only about content, there's also rapport building and this kind of stuff. So you mentioned we might not want to use machine translation in an asylum process or something like that. And then my question to you is, is there something, do you feel there's something, some kind of research or something that we can do to kind of lead, um, politics also, the decision makers into the right direction? What, what would yeah, be needed this, to avoid this kind of scenario? Well, I'm not sure I'm able to tell you what is needed in particular to avoid this scenario. What I can tell you is that we need knowledge about this and there is almost nothing. Uh, Franz Pöchaka uh, has done some work on these there are some small areas of knowledge here and there but it's not still not enough to allow people maybe even external from our field decision makers that will go and see okay what has been researched in this area so far what we know what we don't know and so on they will find nothing or almost nothing, nothing is uh, too, too much, but almost nothing. So everything is needed to be, uh, we, we are at the stage zero or stage one in a scale from one to 10. We are a stage one, let's say, and we need 
uh, to be done. So you can, uh, the, the community can pick whatever topic they, they want, uh, and there is space for everything. And knowledge is knowledge. And, and, and then you build knowledge upon other knowledge. Um, so there is space for everything to be done here. Um, and we don't start, by the way, from zero. If we consider the all work that's been done by interpreting studies, knowing what interpreting is, knowing, for example, uh, the, the, the interaction in, um, in a community interpreting. So, so we, we don't start from zero from that side. We start from one or almost zero from when there is a machine in, in between it. And, and then we, we have to, to start it. But I would say that the first step we have to do is to know ourselves more about this topic before starting to do research uh, on it. And, and here there is a lot of uh, uh, literacy work even inside the community, the academia or community that has to be to be done. So we have to invest time in this and then we will uh, see the, the fruits of this. The problem is, is that probably there is a gap that it's difficult to, to cover because the progress is much faster and then the results of this progress is much faster than our ability to cope with it. So we will lag behind and we will always lag behind. This is the, the, the big issue that I see. And we started to, to, started to land. It is frustrating. Yeah. Thank you. But there is always time to start. It's never too late to start. It's never, oh, too, it's late. never too late, no. Mm. Thanks. Well, thank you again, Dr. Fantignoli, for giving us, uh, in a way, the, the perfect speech to end this conference. Um, but I would like to uh, ask our online participants to stay on. Uh, we're going to have a short closing session. And uh, while um, I invite um, Professor Mark Shuttleworth, head and professor of the Department of Translation, Interpreting and Intercultural Studies, to give the closing remarks, I'm going to uh, announce uh, a couple of reminders and an announcement. Mark